Hello, my wonderful, beautiful friends. Welcome back to our slash entitled people, where in today's episode, you'll hear a crazy story that was emailed to me by a lovely subscriber about her nightmare neighbor and how she targeted OP. Guys, it's a really, really long story, so grab a drink, grab a snack, and get ready to shake your heads because this story is absolutely bonkers. Guys, I do hope you enjoy today's story submission and do hit that subscribe button for future entitled people stories. Let's dive in. My husband and I moved into our apartment December 2018, and we were so excited to finally be living together. We were both coming out of not-so-stellar roommate situations, so we were ready for a break from the drama. We were so innocent and so naive. Now, I still remember the first moment I stepped into the apartment. The floor creaked so loudly and felt so thin that I was actually like, whoa, that's pretty obnoxious. When we had toured this apartment complex, they showed us a model unit that had all the bells and whistles that we weren't getting in our actual unit, so we had no way of knowing what we were in for. It had hardwood floors and granite counters and appliances, and we were told our unit would be the exact same layout, just older finishes and carpet. We were excited nonetheless because we didn't care about upgrades, preferred carpets, and this unit was on the top floor. We both had noisy neighbors upstairs before, so we were excited to not have to listen to consistent, unavoidable noise. I had also been an upstairs neighbor myself, and had never had any complaints before, so I think you can all see where this is going. We started moving in our stuff, and that's when the music started. We could hear loud guitar all throughout the apartment so clearly that I made the comment saying, I wonder if the person below us is a musician. Again, we were so naive. We turned our music on low and continued moving in our stuff and going about our day, and that's when the banging started. I was a little confused, since we weren't doing anything ridiculous, so I assumed maybe this person just didn't like my music. So being a good neighbor, I turned it off. We got a fair bit of our stuff moved in, but then I had to go to work. I was working retail at the time, and it was holiday season, so I didn't get home until about 12.30am. I came into the bedroom, and me and my husband had the air mattress set up, and he was on his phone waiting up for me. We started to chat a little bit, and getting ready for bed. He got up to go brush his teeth, and our neighbors started to aggressively bang on the ceiling. We looked at each other like, are you serious? We were talking quietly and definitely not stomping. We can't not get ready for bed. She banged another few times at least. We got all settled and that's when he looked at me and said, Hey, do you hear that? Yup. It was Jingle Bell Rock, blaring through the floor. We turned on the wall fan unit in the middle of December to try to drown it out a bit, but it didn't really help. We were both lying there, freezing in silence, already regretting renting the unit. The music continued all night. We woke up early the next morning, after a horrible night's sleep to finish moving our stuff. On our door was a lovely note from the entitled woman downstairs. It read, Please be considerate of your neighbor below you. I go to bed early, not 2 a.m. It sounds like explosions down here and you are scaring me and my dog. I would appreciate it if you cut it out. Thanks. Now, this had pissed me off for a number of reasons. First of all, light talking and getting ready for bed is an unavoidable and non-rowdy activity. Second of all, it was actually 12.30am, and hardly my fault that I had to work night shift. Finally, at 2am, the only noise to be heard was the obnoxious Christmas music blaring downstairs from her room that continued on until 6am. I wrote back a snarky note on the back of the original, I posted it on her door, and we decided to just shake it off. Again, we were so naive. Over the rest of December, we tried to live our normal lives. Getting ready for work, cooking, cleaning, watching TV shows and movies in our living room, playing video games with headphones on, and going to bed between 10pm to midnight. We also never had anybody over. We never played music, we never ran, we never stomped, we never jumped, etc. During this time, whenever we would exist in our home, this lady would blare her TVs in both the bedroom and the living room, in response to us coming home. If you stood in the doorway and waited, you wouldn't really hear anything. But the minute the floor creaked, even just a little, she would turn on whatever she wanted to play, and a lot of the times, it was dubstep. We also got multiple calls from the office, letting us know that she was upset. It was always about us walking too loudly. We explained to the office that we were already walking on the balls of our feet, and unless we grew wings, there was no way that we could get any quieter. We were already making sure that closing any doors, closing drawers, or cabinets didn't make any sound. They eventually said they were going to stop bothering us with her complaints, because it sounds like we were already going above and beyond for her, and there was nothing anyone could really do. We would complain about her TV, and they'd always said they'd talk to her, but nothing changed. 
Then the next month, January, the police started to show up. My husband and I kept track of how many times the police were called on us, and it was a total of 16 times in January. She would call in noise complaints and pepper in little details like, I got a flat tire last week. I think they had something to do with it. Or, every time I'm outside, they're watching me from their windows plotting something against me. This would lead the cops to bang on our doors every so often, even in the middle of the nights when we were sleeping. Now, the most ridiculous thing she did was she tried to have us arrested for having my husband's clothing hang drying outside on the balcony. I wish I was lying. She apparently caught a glimpse of his boxer briefs and said there were children living here and called the police saying that she was scared that we were pedos living above her. The police actually showed up at our door and we had a good laugh about it. And they informed me that she was dead serious and she wanted to have us jailed for that. This was our second month here, and we still had no idea what her name was, who she was, what she looked like, what car she drove, nothing. All we knew was there was an angry woman that lived below us with her dog, and she was targeting us. It was honestly so appalling to us that these accusations were made, and we and the police officers agreed that something was not right with her, so they stopped coming out and we continued to ignore the TV. We invested in a fair amount of fans and sound machines for our apartment, which made it slightly more tolerable. When the police and the office stopped humoring her, she started taking matters into her own hands. A true vigilante, if you will. Starting in February, Monday to Friday at 7.40am on the dot, she started turning on music louder than ever, and began leaving for the day. It took us a while to figure out that she wasn't actually home during this time, since we didn't know what she looked like or what car she drove. It was so loud that I could use an app to identify what songs were playing. She also started to regularly bang on the ceiling, throw things at the ceiling, slamming her front door and other doors, drawers, and cabinets in her apartment, and having loud, stomping temper tantrums in response to us just living our lives. After a week of this, we called the office about the music, and they came out and listened and they agreed it was super loud. But since it was during the day, they couldn't really do much unless we got an officer to cite her, and they doubted that would happen. I mentioned the other behavior, and they told me we couldn't really prove it was happening, so they couldn't do anything. They tried knocking on her door, but since she wasn't home, obviously nobody answered. The music, the banging, the slamming, and the temper tantrums continued daily. So one fateful day in March, we were walking up the stairs to our unit when we saw someone walking into her unit. It was an older woman, probably in her 60s. Now that I had a face and a figure, the next day, I waited until the music came on, and like a self-fulfilling prophecy, I actually watched her for the first time from my window. As she left the building, walked to her grey SUV, smirking, because she had just turned on her floor-shaking music in retaliation to us. But what could I do? The office and police were no help. We decided to just continue ignoring her, and continue attempting to drown out the noise with fans, white noise, and headphones. We knew being petty wouldn't help us, and honestly, we were still being pushovers at the time. We were too nervous to go talk to her, and considering everything she'd said to the office and police, we were both advised to just ignore her for our own safety, and continue calling them if the situation escalated. Then it happened. The confrontation. So one April morning, I had a random early shift at work to cover for somebody who was on vacation. I was leaving the building around 6.40am. This apparently was around the time she takes her dog out every morning. I opened the door and saw her in the grass by the parking lot and immediately thought, well, I'm just going to avoid eye contact and hopefully she'll leave me alone. That did not happen. The woman screamed at me the whole walk to my car and got progressively angrier the longer I didn't acknowledge her. I was in full-blown flight mode because I hate confrontation, so I just speed walked to my car and drove off. I called my husband and told him what happened and he immediately called the office and lost it. At this point in time, the building manager got involved and told our neighbor that the music needed to stop. The stomping, banging, and slamming in response to us living needed to stop. And she was not allowed to confront either of us again. If she had problems, she needed to call the office or the police. And her response was, I need the music on for my dog when I'm at work. Yeah, right. She told us that the stomping, slamming, and banging was just her trying to tell us that we were too loud and that we needed to get used to it as we were bothering her. She was also certain that we were obsessed with her, and every single noise we made was on purpose, only to upset her. The office manager agreed that she was nuts and offered a transfer to both of us. She outright refused, insisting that we needed to be evicted. Everybody agreed that we were not the problem here, so why should we move? The rest of April and May were fairly quiet, 
Whatever else the building manager said to our neighbor seemed to resonate. We were finally starting to relax. There were a few fits on her end here and there, but if that was the worst of it, we finally felt like the situation could work. But the peace did not last. Starting in June, her old behavior began to make an appearance full force, and worse than before. The stomping, the slamming, and the banging were back and more than ever before. The music started again. I decided I was no longer playing this game. I had the day off from work, so I opened a bottle of wine and spent about 4 hours learning how to skip rope. Now, I had never skipped rope before, but at this point, I couldn't care less. I ended up hopping up and down on and off for about 5 hours that day. This definitely got her attention, and I could hear her losing her mind downstairs. But I wasn't done. I took my Bluetooth speaker, put it on the floor under my dining table, and blared her music right back at her the entire evening until the quiet hour started. I just sat at my table, drank wine, got wasted, and I laughed maniacally every time I felt her bang right where the speaker was. After this, she never did the music crap again. However, the temper tantrums continued, and we ignored these. Then a few weeks later, our doormat went missing. We found it shoved behind the washer in the laundry room. We contacted the office one final time, and they forwarded a body of one of her emails to them, and it was filled with the craziest crap. She accused us of rocking back and forth on the floorboards for hours, just to bother her. She said we played with the garbage disposal all day, just to make her mad. She accused my husband and I of following her every time she went outside, even though he only saw her a few random times when he took out the trash. She said she was terrified of us, and that we were monsters who were torturing a senior citizen. Obviously, none of this was true. Ultimately, the office told us that they couldn't help us unless we transferred units or got the police citations. We told the office that we would be talking to them today, and they must have tipped her off, because we ended up getting the exact same cop that she talked to maybe an hour or so earlier. I wish I was making this stuff up. He said we didn't seem like the crazy stalkers that she described, and she just seemed off. He advised us to move. Unfortunately, we couldn't afford it, so he advised us to just keep calling, and maybe she'll knock it off. He came out a few other times, and eventually she seemed to stop again for the most part. We went through October, November, and December without any major issues. We ended up making the difficult decision to renew our lease in December of 2019, for a few reasons. We were definitely not in a great financial position to move out of the complex. We also didn't want to transfer because after living in the complex for a year, we learned that many other units had mold, leaks, no easy access to dumpsters, and barely any parking. And they were at least 300 bucks more expensive a month because they were upgraded. If we were leaving the unit, we needed to just leave the complex altogether. We weighed the pros and cons, and with our neighbors seeming to calm down, we decided to stay one more year, which was another big mistake. Starting in January 2020, the old temper tantrums had started up again. Every. Single. Day. She also started to follow us around all day, slamming and banging below us anytime we moved. She started coming out of her apartment to glare at me as I walked down the stairs to work. It was exhausting, and it was depressing. At this point, we couldn't afford to move, and we were locked into another lease, and the police told us they couldn't help, and the office kept insisting on a transfer. We got into a few noise wars with her during the time, and it just made things worse. This lady just wouldn't stop. I can't even imagine having the energy to harass somebody for that long. Then in February, I came home from work with no power in my unit. The hallway had power, and I could hear her TV on blaring from below, so clearly it was just me. I checked my bill, and it was paid. I checked my fuse box, and nothing had blown. I called the emergency maintenance, and the guy came out and checked my breaker, and said it was fine. Then he told me he had to check the main breaker in the basement, and that's when it dawned on me. I asked him if the main breaker panel in the basement was in the storage room, that we all had access to. He said yes, and I asked if the panel was locked up, and he said no. At this point, I started shaking. I told him what had been happening since we moved in, and my suspicions. He took note of that, checked the main breaker, and sure enough, mine was the only one that was turned off. He said they didn't have any contractors out that day, so there was no other logical explanation to why mine would be off, since no fuses blew in my apartment. I was hysterical. She was never gonna stop, and that was the final straw for me. The next week, we had a meeting with the office to go over options, and they told us that they couldn't lock up the breaker due to fire code, and that they were not gonna put up a security camera. They agreed with us that it was probably her, but since there was no proof, again, they couldn't do anything. We were also told that she was coming to the office weekly to sob and scream about how we were ruining her life and that we were awful people. Just for existing. 
They also told us that they suspected that she or someone she knew called them and pretended to be from a third-party agency that was in contact with the attorney general, and that they needed to evict us or there would be consequences. When pressed for information, they wouldn't give any, so clearly it was a fake call. And the office just told them that's not how these things are handled and to call back when they could provide valid information. At this point, I feel like I must be having an extended nightmare because there's no way that this could be happening. It's so absurd. So long story long, we scraped enough money together, we found a new place, we ripped the office a new one, and got them to let us out of our lease penalty free. I honestly feel like I have a mild form of PTSD after living there. The slightest bang, slam, or thump sends my heart rate soaring and I'm starting to have panic attacks due to this entitled woman living below us. I have been scared every time I have to leave my home and always have my phone ready to record when I walk to my car. We've stopped going for walks, cooking new foods, using our living room, eating dinner at our dining room table, cleaning our home as often as we liked, and many other things just because we were harassed daily for it. I hate this psychotic woman with every fiber of my being, and I've never actually confronted her about it because it's not safe or smart. Moving for us is the best option. To all the downstairs neighbors out there, I know it may be noisy, but please consider the fact that you may live in a poorly constructed building, and the people above you are probably trying their best. Talk to them nicely. Try to come to a mutual understanding. My friends, this story was absolutely ridiculous. Now, I've never lived in an apartment before, but all I can say is if somebody was preventing me from living my day-to-day -day life normally, I think I'd have a problem, especially after a few times of cops being called on me for unreasonable things. Now, I know OP said that confronting the woman was not recommended and it might have been dangerous, but man, at that point, you gotta do it. You gotta ask her what the heck her problem is to try to come to a compromise. Bring her some cookies, invite her to a board game night. Maybe she was just miserable living alone. Guys, before we end it, what would you do if you were in OP's situation? Let me know in the comments below. And that, my friends, brings us to another end of our slash entitled people. Guys, if you enjoyed today's wacky story, do give it a thumbs up. And if you missed the last episode of our slash entitled people, OP's mom gets seven years in jail for going nutso because OP did not give her birthday money. Check it out if you haven't, and I'll see you guys in the next one. I love you.